In this video, we will be covering Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle states that an increase in the speed of a fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure or a decrease in the fluid's potential energy. The principle was named after Daniel Bernoulli, who published his works in the book uh, Hydrodynamics in 1738. And so we can apply Bernoulli's principle to a uh, variety of types of fluid flow. And there are different forms of Bernoulli's equation that exist. Uh, we will be looking at the simple form of Bernoulli's equation. And this will be valid for um, incompressible flows, such as uh, most of the uh, liquids and gases moving at a low Mach number. For more advanced forms, uh, it would be a little bit more advanced than what we are ready to cover. So Bernoulli's principle can be derived from the principles of conservation of energy and this states that in a steady flow the sum of all the forms of energy in a fluid along a streamline is the same at all points on that streamline and this requires the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy and the internal energy to remain constant and so what this basically shows is that the conservation of energy holds true within a fluid and that if you add pressure the kinetic energy in terms of density and the potential energy in terms of density you get the same value anywhere along a streamline so what Bernoulli's equation states is that the sum of the pressure of the kinetic energy per unit volume and the potential energy per unit volume has the same value at all points along a streamline. And so what we have is right here is the pressure energy. Right in this area we have the kinetic energy per unit volume. And right in this area here, we have the potential energy per unit volume, and it's going to show that it's constant along all points of a streamline. So let's look at a uh, Bernoulli's problem. Water circulates throughout the house in a hot water heating system. If the water is pumped at a speed of 0 0.50 meters per second through a 4.0 centimeter diameter pipe in the basement under a pressure of 3.0 atmospheres, what will be the flow speed and pressure in a 2.6 centimeter diameter pipe on the second floor 5.0 meters above? Now as we solve the problem, we will notice that our initial area and volume will equal our uh, area times our second volume. And so as we do this, in order to calculate our area, we have to use the formula pi radius squared. And so what we did was we subbed in pi radius squared for our area, and notice that we can ca uh, cancel out of pi. And so if we look at our radius, we get 0 0.04 squared, and we get that because we had our 4 centimeters and we converted that over to uh, meters. So 4 centimeters is 0 0.04 meters. So we square that, we multiply that times our uh, 0.5, which is our volume that we have right here. And that's going to equal our 0 0.026 squared. And again, that's because we have our um, 2.6 centimeters, we have to convert over to meters. And then our volume 2 is our unknown. And so we do a simple algebraic solution and we get our second volume as 1.183 meters per second. Now when we look at our formula here, what we, we see going on is that basically the energy per unit volume before will equal the energy per unit volume after. And so again, we're going to see our initial uh, pressure energy. We'll see our, our initial kinetic energy per unit volume plus our uh, initial potential energy per unit volume will equal our final pressure our final kinetic energy uh, per unit volume and uh, that added to our final potential energy per unit volume. Now as we plug these numbers in and we calculate our uh, initial pressure energy you'll notice that that states that it's three atmospheres 
and we need to convert from atmospheres to uh, pascals. And so we know that one atmosphere equals 1 times 10 to the fifth pascals. We have three atmospheres. We multiply that times 1 times 10 to the fifth pascals over one atmosphere. Atmospheres cancel out, and that's where I get my 3 times 10 to the fifth and this is in pascals. So we're going to multiply that times one half. This right here is density. And if you remember, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. We have our volume here that we calculated, and we saw that it was um, 0.50 meters per second. So we put that in here. Plus, again, looking right here, we have our density of water times the acceleration due to gravity, and our initial height is zero. Now that's going to equal our final pressure energy. This is our unknown that we're solving for, plus one half. Again, we have the density of water. We're located right in this area of our formula, times our uh, volume two. We calculated that right here. And you'll notice that we had to square that. That's from our equation. Plus, again, we have our density of water times the acceleration due to gravity times 5. And we get the 5 because that final height was 5. Now, when we do this, we're going to solve for P, and we would get our answer as 2.5 times 10 to the 5th Pascal's Newton meters squared, or 2.5 atmospheres as our answer.